Hello and welcome to another video in the series of tutorials that will help you become more familiar with Expressor. My name is Michael Tarallo. I am with the sales and marketing team at Expressor Software. In this video, I will show you how to work with fixed width file types. Recently, I was working with a private undergraduate liberal arts college and they were interested in accessing ACT test data for their reporting services. If I navigate to the ACT website, you can see there is an electronic student record layout. If I click the test file, you can see it is fixed length data. If I click back and I go to the record layout, you can see it provides a PDF document that describes the structure of the file. If we go back to Expressor and we open up the existing fixed width data flow, and we open up the transform operator called break into fields, you will see we are reading in the raw input data as a single string and then providing the breakout in the form of a substring function, breaking out into the appropriate fields. Now I'm going to show you how to create this and I'm also going to make this available. So if anybody wants to use this to process the ACT test data with Expressor, they can immediately import the project and start doing so. And what we're going to do is create a new project. And I'm going to define a new file connection. And this file connection is just basically going to go to the location of where I have processed that, uh, where I will process that file. That's going to be under demo and simple. And click next. And we'll just call it file connection one. Now, if we go back to the website, just to show you that this is live, I will click on the, let's click back here, click on the test file, right click, save as and we'll just call it new QXP College 790 TXT. Now in order to read that file, we're gonna create a new delimited schema. And we're gonna do that by right clicking on the schema and selecting delimited schema from data source. Get data from file, select your connection artifact, and then select the data file. Now it'll provide a sample representation and what we must do is change the record delimiter because if you look at the particular file itself with a tool such as Notepad, understanding that some text files created with like a Unix operating system, the actual record delimiter is a line feed, not carriage return line feed. You can see that with the LF symbol at the end. So we'll change the record delimiter to line feed. As far as the field delimiter go, it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, so we'll just leave it as comma, click next, and since we don't really have commas delimiting the fields, we're just going to read in the entire record structure as a single field. So we'll just call this ACT raw data. And this will be the ACT raw data schema. And we can call that a fixed width schema. Finish that. Now if we open up the schema, if you've watched the other video tutorials, understanding the left side describes the external or physical structure and then the right side describes the internal logical or actionable structure to Expressor, you can see the very simple one-to-one -one mapping. The next thing we want to do is we want to translate that single string of raw data and break that out into multiple fields. Well, I don't want to type all of those fields. If we go back to PDF document, I don't want to manually add each attribute to a schema. So a nice little trick is you can open up a text file or create a text file, in this case a delimited text file by commas, and just represent all of the field names. So basically reporting year, last, first, middle, all the way down to norms type represents the layout that you see here starting with reporting year, first name, etc., and going all the way down to norms type. It's a very easy way to define a delimited schema that you can use for the operation. So for example, we're going to define the right schema. This is going to be the target. New delimit schema from data source, file connection artifact, and I called it ACT students, as you can see across the top here. Select that. And this is a field delimiter. 
of a comma and record delimiter of CR plus LF. Click next. And now you can see in this case, it's one row of data. We can click set all names for, uh, from selected row. And that will name all of the appropriate attributes. So we'll call this one target ACT student schema. Click finish. Now, if we open that up, this is going to be used by the uh, right operator because it's a delimited schema. And you can see the one to one representation. So in this case, when we map, we're going to be creating a transform operator that's going to map all of these attributes and then write them to these fields. And then that can be written to a database or a file. In this case, we're just going to write to a delimited file. Now, the beauty of doing that is when we create our transform operator, when we bring that in, we can just drag in those attributes into the transform operator instead of creating them one at a time. So let's create a new data flow. And we're going to do read file, select our connection artifact, select our schema, in this case, the raw data file. And we're not going to be skipping any rows because there isn't any header records this time. So we leave skip row zero, and then we select our file name. And that's going to be the new QXB call at 790. So now our read file operator is configured. Then we'll select our transform operator. And then we'll select our output operator. In this case, it'll be a write file. And the properties for the write file operator, it's going to be the same file connection artifact. This time, the target ACT student schema. And then the file name is pretty much whatever you want to call it. So we can call this one new student ACT output. And quotes will say as needed in case there's any commas or uh, special characters that we need to escape, uh, include the header record. Okay. Now you'll notice that the operations haven't satisfied those requirements because we have attributes that are coming from the read file and attributes coming out of the write file. And those have to be satisfied and match. And the way we do that is within the transform operator, because watch what happens when I open up the transform operator. Okay, what you're going to see is right now, what's coming in is the single string of raw data. And what's being auto propagated right now is the single string of raw data. But notice coming from the downstream attribute, downstream meaning, meaning going in this direction from the right file towards the transform are all the attributes that we put in the target schema. That's what these little dotted uh, arrows pointing that direction mean. So the way to satisfy this is we're going to grab our ACT raw data attribute. It creates a new rule. And we're going to use this rule within a substring operation available within our function library to break it out into the appropriate in this case, attributes. And all I have to do in this case here is select all of the attributes, hold down your shift key, and then drag them into add output. And what it will do is it'll create a individual rule for each attribute to be written to. Now understand these areas that it creates by default are called the parameter rules. These could be whatever you want. Uh, that makes remapping to other sources a lot easier. But in this case, it names them the same. And then you'll notice each rule defaults to a value of nil. Uh, that is like a null value. And then what we would do is we would put in the appropriate function to break out the appropriate, subs, uh, appropriate subset of data. So notice that in this case here, we still have ACT raw coming across. We don't want that to be in our final data set. So we'll just select it and choose block inputs and that will remove it from the list. Now, all we need to do is put in the function to transform the data. So I can go from my functions library string and I can select the substring function, provide my input, which will always be input dot ACT raw data. And then I would start providing the positioning information that's available in the layout document. So for example, reporting year is position one to two. So that would be one comma two. And then I can just copy that function and then paste it. Now the next one is last name. If we go back to the document, last name is position three to 27. So position three to 27. And then we'll do one more. Student first name is 28 to 43. Paste it in. 
and then we do 28, 43. Okay, so you would pretty much repeat that all the way until you got to, you know, the last element in this case, which is uh, norms type. And you can see if we go all the way down to the bottom, you have norms type. So once these are satisfied, you will then have a transformation operator that will bring in and break apart the ACT raw data into its appropriate attributes and therefore fields to be written to a file. So to make things a lot easier is after you've completed this, you can save this as a template and then provide it to others to reuse without having to recreate this. So to give you an example here, if we explore and you can see we have our schema, target schema, and you have the operator. If I right click and say save as template, we can create a template, but I already have one already in the fixed width. So imagine that this operator template was part of a library. So I can say, copy to our shared library. And then I could also say the right schema, in this case, the one we just created called target, copy to shared library, and then the ACT raw data fixed width, copy to shared library. Okay, so now these being available inside the shared library as schemas and templates can make the creation of this data flow a lot easier for others who might want to use this data. So immediately here, I'm just going to not even save this data flow. And I'm even going to delete this project and showing you the use now, my connections here are even available in the library. I'll create a new project and we'll call this new fixed with project. And I'll make, this is the project I'll make available to you guys. Library reference, and now reference the shared library. Create a new data flow. Call it my new data flow. Grab it, my read file operator. Select my connection from the shared library. And then you can see also the schemas are available from the shared library. So from a simple pull down menu, I can say, well, here's my ACT raw data fixed file. Select the file. Now my read file operator is configured. I can go to my transformers and then this time selecting templates. There's my ACT transform template. And if I open up the transform operator, You'll see there's our defined substring functions, and all I have to do is map in the ACT raw data string. Now take note that the parameter rule that we defined is called ACT data string, and that's what's available here. We don't have to make any changes to this. We just map ACT raw data to ACT data string. That's one of the beauties of the reusable operators and the semantic framework. And then notice our output attributes are mapped appropriately already. And then all we need to do now is add our output operator. Right file. And then configure that as well. You can see there is the target ACT, target ACT student schema. And we just have to provide it a file name new ACT student out.txt and quote as needed and include header record. You can save that, execute our data flow. And if we navigate to our file explorer, date modified, there is our new ACT student out.txt. And there we go. So what we've done is broken apart the fixed width data into the limited data, in this case, output to a file. From this point, obviously, if you've watched the other tutorials, you'd understand you'd be able to transform, error trap, uh, perform corrective actions, etc. Obviously, through watching those other tutorials, you can gain different perspective on how you can work with this data. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I know it was helpful to the uh, college that I worked with, and I uh, hope to speak with you guys in the future. And please feel free to ask any questions or send me emails at techevangelist at expressor-software.com. Take care, guys.